Hello and welcome back to the 12th part of programming with Bitwig. If you made it this far, you can be very proud of yourself. I guess you're one of the last two people who made it so far. And it will get more crazy in this part. We will talk about multi-threading and the still considered as beta graphics API. What is the problem with threading? Normally in a software, you want to execute multiple parts of your program in parallel and this is just not possible with JavaScript. JavaScript is always single threaded. There is one little workaround for that if you do JavaScript. There is this function called schedule task which allows you to delay the execution of a callback function by a number of milliseconds. So the delay is in milliseconds and you need that function sometimes. For example you update some state in Bitwig and this might take some time till this state is really updated because Bitwig only processes your commands when it has time to do so. So it might be necessary uh, to wait some time till you, for example, send out to a different application this updated state as well. So if you call then a getter, the getter of your Bitwig property might not yet been set. So sometimes it's a good idea to delay this uh, callback. Also in the scheduled task, when the callback gets called, the callback could call again the scheduled task. So this way you could have a process running in the background which checks its duty from time to time for some cleanup, for example, or whatever you want to do. So that's a bit of a trick as a workaround, but it's definitely not multi-threading. But the advantage of that is you don't have to take care about any synchronization at all in your code. Moving on to Java. If you do Java, Java is absolutely multi-threaded. And also if you program Java with B week you can do multi-threading so you can create your own threads but if you do so be absolutely careful what you're doing make sure everything is synchronized because you can totally kill bitwig with that or delay it so it slows down and nobody knows why this is happening multi-threading is absolutely necessary as well if you want to do graphics so the graphics part is considered still to be beta because it has some problems with max for example so if you release some something like that your extension will be flagged as beta and you also have to tell it's beta and you do that in your controller extension definition and you have to overwrite a function which is called is using beta api and there you have to return true if you use such an api otherwise your extension will crash during startup and will tell you that you're trying to use a beta api without telling so and this will get flagged in bitwig for example if you use here my push to script this requires to use beta API to fill the display of the push to controller. And there you see it gets flagged as beta. So the user can decide if he wants to use that or not. Looking at the code, how do you do graphics? You again use the host object as we are used to. And from the host object, you can create the bitmap. You can tell Bitwig how large you want to have this and you cannot change that afterwards. And there you can have two options for different bitmap forms. The idea is to choose that accordingly to the display you want to fill. And again, the main idea of this graphics API is to fill graphical displays on your external controllers. It's not intended to do any kind of user interface or something like this on your desktop PC or Mac or Linux system. But nevertheless, it can display its content in a window. And here the main intention is again to do some debugging of your code so you see what is drawn and you don't have to think about is a problem of your code with the external device or is it in your local code so you can see what is actually drawn and then check out where the problem occurs and you can also set a title for this window to give you a better idea where this is coming from and then the main thing which has happened is this render function so here for this bitmap you can call this render function and there you need to give a callback function and in this callback function this is where you actually write your code for drawing into this bitmap. To do so you get such a graphics output context and there you can use a lot of different commands. For example you can draw circles here in this example and so on. So if you look at the API you will see there's a lot of possibilities in this graphics output. You can scale, you can do path drawing, rectangles, everything. One thing to note which might surprise you a bit if you use 
different drawing APIs. It's more like a stack, so we execute multiple commands. And when you're done with these commands, you call a kind of a commit function. These commit functions depend on what you intend to do. For example, you can fill then an area, paint an area, or you can also uh, just draw if you just execute it. It's called stroke. You can call a stroke function if you just want to draw some lines. That's something to note which might surprise you because if you just say I want to have a circle, simply nothing happens. Only after I call fill, then you get a filled circle. I could also have called stroke instead of that, and I would have just get the surroundings of a circle. If you need to get more information, the documentation here is very sparse, but the API used internally is a Cairo graphics uh, framework. So you can check out that manual where you find also lots of examples how to use these commands. So this API is not that complicated, but actually using is very complicated because you have to do synchronization because here I just rendered this bitmap once on startup, but normally your graphics changes because if you display, for example, a volume fader and the user changes the volume, then you need to redraw your volume fader. So you need to call render in that somewhere. If you have rendered your bitmap, you can get access to the byte buffer, which represents your bitmap. And then you can send out this byte buffer to your graphics display. And all these needs to be synchronized. So you need to take care of the rendering, which should happen in its own thread. And you need to take care about the sending out to your graphics display. And this depends on your graphics display, if you need to refresh it or if it keeps its state until you send a new update. This is differently with some devices. If you don't need to send regular updates to your device, you could, for example, execute this also in the flush to send that out. But uh, yeah, you need to test that with your device. I compiled this extension with Apache Maven and copied the BW extension file to Bitwig. It turned up here. And if I activate it, you will see we get this funny little window with a red circle in it. And there are some controls for it. You can enlarge it, but it will then stay still the same. It can also be in the background. Sometimes when you open it, it will be in the background. So you need to find it here somewhere on your taskbar. And you can close it down, but if you close it down, you cannot open it again. So you would need to put a button somewhere, for example, in the setting to open that window again, if you want to see it. I hope this gets you started. If you need to look into graphical displays and how to fill them and how to do graphics on them. And until next time, write some funky code.